Welcome back, let's tab 59. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Welcome back, troops. Uh, okay, so as the title suggests then today, I'm gonna to talk to you about optics. It's gonna be telescopic sites we're talking about when I talk about optics. And the mounts, that's the little brackets that uh, secure the telescopic sight to your firearm, or your air rifle, whatever it is. So first of all, let's get straight into it then, mounts. When you buy um, an air rifle or a firearm, um, sometimes it may come as a package or you might be buying it second hand and it will come with the scope and mounts already fitted and that's fine if you're happy with that. However, if you buy an air rifle or firearm and it doesn't have any of that, then you want to fit optics, you want to fit a telescopic sight, then you're going to need to make sure that you get the right mounts for the right scope. And again, your gun shop will direct you the right way. So, mounts. Here's a little set here. You can see these two little tiny clamps on top there, secured with little Allen keys, little Allen nuts you get an Allen key for. And these basically, all they do is clamp onto the rail or the Picatinny rail on your rifle and then your scope fits in through these and secured down. And, and you tighten them up and that holds the scope in position on the rifle. So when we talk about mounts, this is what we're talking about. They come in various types. This is obviously two um, individual ones, um, which is probably the most common type of mount for a telescopic sight. However, I've got an example here of this air rifle, and you can quite clearly see that this is a one-piece mount. And that's fine for this particular rifle. It works really well. There's no real advantage or disadvantages between the two. This looks a little bit neater maybe, uh, and it secures nicely on there. It's in one piece. And you can see on the top there, there's the two rings. Obviously, uh, these rings uh, aren't really movable because they're fixed to this block itself. Now, this could be uh, the wrong sort of mount to have if you've got an ejection port here. So you've got to be careful what you get. This works, I say, it's an air rifle which loads at the front there. So there's nothing going to get away the ejection port. So that's classed as a one-piece mount. The other ones I showed you previously, I'll set those two rings, that's a two ring mount. Now, let's show it fitted to a rifle. So here we have this 17 HMR, and you can see here, the scope on top, and then either side of the turrets there are the one piece, uh, the two piece mounts, and they move up and down, so you can fit the scope exactly how you want it with the right, correct eye relief. So that's a two piece mount. Showed you the one piece. Now, there's another type of one piece mount. I'll show you on this 308 7.62. This is another one piece mount. And you can see that the front part is sort of raised up here. It's a vortex mount and it's called a cantilever mount. It's just the way it's designed. Works really well with this rifle, as you can see, there's plenty of clearance for the ejection port for it, uh, exiting spent cartridges. It's not gonna interfere with the sighting system. So that works well for that. So that's your mounts. Now, a little thing about mounts. When you have fitted the mount to the firearm, and then you're gonna put the scope on top, uh, when you put these two clamps on and you start to tighten them up, on this particular one, I've got two Allen nuts on that side of it, two on this side and the same at the front. When you tighten them down, do it in rotation, a bit like when you tighten up the wheel nuts on a car, so you want to go diagonally across, tighten them down. When you buy the scope and the mounts, it will tell you in the instructions that you need to torque that down. I believe this one is, is 18 or something, 18 torque, something like that. Try to adhere to that if you can. If you're not sure, get the gun shop to do it for you, because if you don't tighten them up enough, um, then you'll get scope creep. And that's either where you haven't tightened up the Allen nuts on the mount to the Picatinny rail in this case, and with the recoil of the weapon, that can move. And of course, then suddenly you're not hitting the target anymore because you've lost your zero. And the same goes for these two clamps on top. If they're too loose, then the scope with the recoil, even on an air rifle, will start to move or it'll start to lose, you'll get cant the, the uh, crosshairs won't sit right, you'll see it, it's gone to one side. It's where these have come loose. So always check them before and after you've used a firearm. But 
and this is really, really important, probably worse than having them loose, in a way, is having them too tight because you can cause a lot of damage. This is just a very thin aluminium or steel tube. And inside there is all your optics, which are obviously very, very delicate. Now, I happen to have an example to show you. This scope here come off of my little 2-2. Now, when I bought the 2-2 uh, rimfire rifle, it came with this scope and it's been brilliant. I've had this, fit, it came fitted, it was second hand, and it was fantastic. I've never had to do anything. I've, I've checked it now and again, but it never moved. And I've had this for about eight years. And then a few weeks ago, I was at my local range, on 25 meter indoor range, firing away, and I was just not even hitting the target, 25 meters. So I thought something's gone wrong here. I stopped firing, stopped wasting ammunition, took the rifle home, bore sighted it, that was fine. Took it back to the range the following week, was firing again, same detail. Couldn't hit the target at 25, nowhere near. And I bore sighted it, made no sense. I checked everything, everything was straight and everything was tightened. Brought it back home again. I thought I'm gonna to have to take this off because I need to have a good look at it. And when I did, I discovered this. Now, I don't know how well this is gonna show up. You should be able to see but it's actually bent and if you look really really closely there you can see a little white mark that's where it's actually this black mark here this band is where the mount was and the same with the back rear one that's the front one and what's happened is it's been over tightened i don't know how i haven't tightened it there must have been a hairline crack in there and over time it's got worse and worse and maybe it's got knocked i've knocked it in the in the gun cabinet or something but it's produced a crack right across the aluminium casing of course now that's drooping down like that. I mean, I'm sure if I bent it hard enough, it'd actually snap that ring. It's nearly all the way around. So if you over tighten the scope, that's the kind of thing that can happen. And obviously that scope now is, is, is of no use at all. So be aware, don't over tighten the scopes. Okay, let's talk about scopes. And while I've got this one here, I can show you on this, it'd be easier than holding a rifle up. So the basic parts of the scope then, when you hear someone say, I've got a three to nine by 50, or you see it advertised, a three to nine by 50, or a, in this particular case, it's um, a four to 12 by 50. What are they talking about? Well, at the back here, the first thing you've got, where your eye relief is, you don't put your eye against the scope, obviously, you have your eye set back. There's a little ring here, and it normally has a plus and min minus mark, it's been painted over. That is just a focus ring. So when you've set yourself up and you're looking down at the target that's a little bit blurred, just give that a little twist left or right until you sharpen the picture up and you can see clearly the target you're shooting at. That's just a focus ring. And that will change with whatever range you're setting at. So if you're shooting at 25 meters and then suddenly you come down to say 10 meters, you may have to just adjust that focus ring just to sharpen it up. The next thing you come across then, if it's a variable scope, and this one is, variable magnification, is some markings here telling you the times of magnification. As I say, this one goes from um, four times magnification, so in other words, four times closer than it is with a Mark I eyeball, up to 12. So it's a four to 12 by 50. So the four to 12 or nine, three to nine or whatever it is, tells you the amount the, the range of magnification you've got for that scope. The 50, in this case, is measuring your, what we call the objective lens, which is this part of the end here. That's 50 mils across, so it's a 50 mil scope. The bigger this is, obviously, the more you can see. It gives you a bigger view of the target area. But also, if you're shooting in low light, I'm not saying nighttime, but low light, the bigger this objective lens, it'll gather a little bit more of the ambient light that's out there and it'll give you a little bit more clarity at low light. It's not a night sight. So like I say then, the scope is classed as a four to 12, four times, 12 times magnification by 50. And they come in all sorts of sizes. Probably for an air rifle, you know, three to nine by 40 is fine. It's up to you, it depends. You don't want a great big scope unless you're doing mega shooting. Uh, also on this particular scope, it's got a parallax adjuster, which is the end bit, and this rotates. And this is marked, this particular one, in yards. And it goes down uh, to 10 yards, and then I can turn it and twist it up right through 15, 
20 all the way up to 300 yards. Now, parallax is a whole different subject, but if you know the range you're shooting, that's if you're on a 25 meter range, make sure you set your parallax to 25. If you're 100 meters and so on. Not all scopes have a parallax adjuster. Some are just completely fixed. They have no magnification. It'd be set at four, say, and there'd be no parallax adjuster. Some rifle scopes have the parallax, not on the end, they have on the side, like another turret. Okay, so in this case, you can see I've got three turrets on this. This one is doing the um, windage, i.e. left to right, and it's marked underneath this little cap. If I unscrew that, and take that off, it just protects it. I can see on there, it says which way to turn it, and each little click. And the same on the top, that's doing your elevation, your up and down. So that's how you adjust the zero uh, for your scope. The third turret in this particular case, on this old scope, is for light. I can, there's a little battery in there, a little flat type watch battery thing. And when I turn that, um, it lights up, it illuminates the graticules, the crosshairs of the, the scope. So again, at low light, you can do that. It just shows you the scope. If, if it's dark and you can't see the crosshairs on the target, you can click this over the different brightnesses. You can have different colors. This does red or green, and it'll illuminate those crosshairs so you impose that on top of the target, you can see it a bit clearer. Now that's a basic scope with a parallax at the front and, um, and the zoom control, if you like, at the rear. Now, going back to this rifle, the 17 HMR, on this particular rifle, you'll see that there is no parallax adjuster at the end of the scope. It's just not there. Where it is, is on this side of the rifle. So I've got my parallax here, and it, it's marked exactly the same as the other one on the front, it's just on the side here, I can read it 10, 15, and so on. So it's, it's still a parallax adjuster, it's just on the side of the scope. Um, and then it's got the same turret system, they'll all have that, a top turret for your elevation, and a side turret for your windage, left and right. This particular scope uh, is uh, magnified up to 16, and it goes down to four. So four to 16 by 15. Again, there's a focus ring at the rear. They all have that. And this particular one on top here has got another little illumination system, which I turn that on. That lights up the reticules, the crosshairs for low level shoot, low light shooting. And there's a plus and minus little rubberized button here. And obviously by pressing the plus symbol, it brightens the reticule, the crosshairs or I can dim them down. So that's the same sort of scope, it's just a parallax in a different location. They all come in different places. But the common, most common ones, parallax is on the end. Okay, now going back to this scope here, which is a very good scope actually, it's a Schmidt and Bender, a German manufacturer. This one's actually made in Hungary. A lot of them are made in there under license in Hungary, but still fantastic scope. This one has the focus ring on the end here, but there's no parallax and there's no zoom. This is a fixed hunting scope. It's a, a six, it's six times magnification. So it's fixed at six times. That's it, you can't zoom in, zoom out. It's a hunting scope, pick it up, it's fixed at six, that's fine. Great little scope. I'll put it on the air rifle. It's probably too much scope for an air rifle. So that's a brief look at mounts and scopes. Remember, don't over tighten them. I didn't do that, not guilty. Okay, so before we finish up with a top tabbing combat tip, just a quick word about the channel. The channel is growing very slowly. Thanks to you people that are watching and thank you very much to all the people that are subscribing. I think I'm currently at about 158 um, subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. The channel's only been going since July. I'm a real amateur at this. I'm an old fart. I'm having a go. Please, if you can subscribe and give us a like, uh, that would really help me. The, the more I can get, the more I can do. And, and I want to do lots more like this. I'm not in it for the money. I just want to grow the channel. So, as I promised then, at the end, there always, always is one. Top tabbing tips, top tabbing tips, top tabbing combat tips today's top tabbing tip remember this 
your weapon is always made by the lowest bidder. Remember that. You're never going to get anything smart and fantastic out of the army. Let me tell you that. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Till the next time, troops. Let's tap.